Hello and welcome to Nerdio Manager for WVD demo of the day. And in today's video, we're going to look at the newly released Azure Files integration with Active Directory, uh, which was released recently into uh, GA, into General Availability by Microsoft. And Nerdio Manager already has an integration to simplify the deployment process for you right from within the Nerdio Manager interface. This feature is available in the Nerdio Manager starting with version 2.0.1. So uh, any version including 2.0.1 and newer will have that feature. If you have an older version, you will not see the tile for Azure files. So be sure to upgrade to the latest release. So we're going to start on the settings page. And if we scroll down towards the bottom of the screen, we'll see our two Azure Files and Azure Neta File sections. The Azure Files is the new one that we'll be looking at today. So let's go ahead and go through the process of provisioning a new Azure Files share and integrating it with the Active Directory. So first thing we're gonna do is click on Add. Once we click on Add, we need to select a resource group into which we want to provision a storage account, which is going to be storing our Azure Files share. We are going to give the storage account a name. So let's go ahead and call it uh, demo of the day uh, storage account 01. We are going to select a location. Now, this is really important uh, to select a location that is going to be in the same region as the network that is hosting your WVD session host VMs. Uh, the Azure Files share is going to be used for housing the FSLogix profile containers and the performance of that storage system and the connectivity to it from the WVD session hosts is really critical to end user experience. So be sure when you're selecting the location for the storage account, you are selecting one that's the same as where your WVD session hosts VMs are located. The next thing we have to select is the performance tier. Now there are two performance tiers, there's premium and standard, and they differ not only in the performance of the storage system, but also in the way that they're priced. So when dealing with standard, which is something that we don't often see used in production, and it's really not recommended for high performance systems, we really do recommend using the premium tier. Uh, what, you, what you do is you pay only for the consumed storage on this particular file share, and you don't have to specify any sort of provisioned amount, or you don't have to tell the you don't have to tell Azure how much space you want to reserve because you'll only pay for what you've actually consumed. So if we're going to do standard, all you have to do is specify a file share name here. You can then add a user or group name that you want to assign to this particular host pool and click add and that's going to create the file share but for our example let's go ahead and, and select premium now what's different about premium is that both the performance and the pricing is determined by what's known as provisioned capacity in gigabytes the minimum amount of provision capacity is 100 gigabytes. And we provide you with some additional information here about how this works. But you know, ultimately, what you need to be aware of is the number of gigabytes that you will provision as the capacity will both be charged to you regardless of how much of it you're using. So it's important to not over provision uh, if, uh, if you don't need a huge amount because you're gonna be paying for everything from the moment you click add. But it's also important to know that the performance of this file share is going to be proportional to how much capacity you provision. The more capacity you provision, the more IOPS and throughput Azure will allow to this file share. So if you under provision, you will uh, pay less, right? If you, unless you're using that capacity. And if you over provision, you're gonna pay more. But if you under provision, your performance may suffer. Now, what happens if you under provision the capacity, but then you go ahead and you exceed that capacity? What happens in that scenario is that you're going to pay for your actual usage, which 
exceeds your provision capacity, but you will only get the performance of the provision capacity. So it's important to kind of keep those things in mind as you're managing and monitoring your Azure file share. So let's go ahead and create a new file share. We're gonna call it premium FS logics 01. We're gonna provision a capacity of 100 gigabytes and we can now add permissions to this. So for instance, I'm gonna assign it to NMW tester and I'm also going to assign it to my marketing department group, um, which you can see this is a group and this is a user and we're gonna click add. Once we click add, uh, Nerdia Manager is going to trigger a task that you can see here on the bottom. If we click on details, you will see exactly what it's doing. So it's right now creating a storage account by the name that we've selected. And then within that storage account, it, will, it is going to create uh, a file share. And once that file share is created, then we are gonna be provided with a script that we can download right here. There's gonna be a little download button that will appear next to the newly provisioned file share. And look at that, it's just completed, only took about a minute. And we can see here is our new file share. And we're going to click on this download button right here. And it's going to tell us what to do with that file. It's gonna be a zip file that's gonna contain a number of modules and a PS uh, uh, file called join to ad.ps1. And what you're gonna to need to do is download the zip file to your Active Directory domain controller, unblock the file on the properties and extract its contents to a local folder. You're then going to open up administrative PowerShell and run the join to ad.ps1 file. And when prompted, log in with your Azure AD credentials, make sure that the user has contributed access to the account that we just created. And then once that's done, you are going to have added this fi file share to your Active Directory. And then all you do is you come back to the screen and refresh the page and watch for this particular, um, uh, for, watch for this particular icon to have disappeared from the list to indicate that it has fully joined to the domain. Once it's fully joined to the domain, you can see the path is listed right here. Here is this one in our example. We can go ahead and copy this path. Then we can scroll up to our FSLogix profile storage path. We can replace it and click OK. And that is going to then apply this path to any newly created or re-imaged VMs. And we're gonna start using Azure files integrated with Active Directory, either with premium or standard storage. Hope you found this useful and I will see you in the next video.